Thank you for joining us. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And for more information about this show and the rest of Corleone's season, visit corleone.org and subscribe to our newsletter, The E-Roar. This special episode of Corleone Inside is proudly sponsored by Peter Yost and one of our beloved baritones. They say it's all right. They say it's all right. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Hello and welcome to a special episode of Corleone Inside. My name is Eric Light. I'm the artistic director of Corleone Men's Choir here in Vancouver, British Columbia, and uh, very happy to have you with us as we take a deep dive into a piece that I've been involved in uh, for uh, about 14 years, All Is Calm, The Christmas Truce of 1914, which is a theatrical work uh, created by Peter Rothstein, who is our guest today. And uh, that has now just been turned into a film that is uh, gone live just today on PBS Plus, streamable everywhere for free and is appearing on PBS stations across the United States. And uh, we wanted to take a little bit of moment because uh, there's not too many uh, acapella musicals in the world, especially those that are dealing with um, uh, male, choir, male choral music. So uh, we hope you can uh, enjoy this conversation and, and hear a little bit of music uh, from, from, from the show. All is Calm is a documentary historical musical about the 1914 Christmas truce in World War I. It is conceived of as a, with dialogue that is all letters and found texts from history and is all arrangements, a cappella arrangements of, of trench songs, World War I songs, as well as Christmas carols. And through uh, that means it tells its story about uh, the 1914 Christmas truce, which up to even a few years ago was considered to be maybe an apocryphal story or even a, a, a piece of fiction. But uh, uh, truly this is uh, an event that happened in history and a remarkable one. And All Is Calm, I think, documents this in a uh, really honest and historical way. Uh, before we bring in Peter and uh, get into more of our conversation on the piece, I want to play you the opening work from this. This is a, a piece that I arranged of a Celtic ballad, a uh, Scottish ballad called Will You Go to Flanders? And this was a song that predated World War I, uh, but uh, it, it is about go going off to war and certainly one that might have been sung um, as we uh, as soldiers went off to to battle in in World War one and it and it serves as uh, in in the show kind of a, an, an invocation and, and an invitation to the audience to allow these ghosts from the past uh, these these people from history to come forward and tell their story as we go to Flanders and and hear it. Uh, this is a performance of Corleone from a few Remembrance Days ago, and this is Will You Go to Flanders from All Is Calm. Oh 
That was Will You Go to Flanders from All Is Calm, arranged by, well, me. And uh, that was in a performance by Corleone from a few years ago at one of our Remembrance Day performances. And I am now so happy to welcome to the program uh, one of my good friends and collaborators, Peter Rothstein. Hello, Peter. Hello. From far away. It's great to... Uh, Yes, uh, it's it's funny. We're sort of working together this year, but we haven't been together uh, with with all that's uh, all that's going on with with all is calm. Uh, by the way, congratulations on having a, uh, a work like this uh, get aired on PBS. It's it's wonderful. Same to you. Yeah, um, I want to. A lot of things that were talked about for this for this piece are covered in the in a documentary that follows the PBS uh, airing. So I don't want to get into too many of the things that you talk about there, which are, are, are really fabulous. I want to try to dig into a few other things, especially um, uh, your views on how the, the music works here. So I got to first lead with the question because I still don't know the answer to this. Why did we do an acapella musical? Why? Why was this the form uh, that was chosen? To make it almost impossible to be to do well, <laughs> <laughs> just to yeah. shoot ourselves in the foot over and over again. <laughs> yeah, the challenges, no, right? But, I mean, but, but what? Uh, it, there's absolutely are challenges, but of course, with every challenge comes some opportunities. So, so, right. so, what are they? How does that relate to the story that you wanted to tell here? You know, I think. Uh, in in choosing to to lean into kind of more of a documentary style with the piece um there might have been a squeeze box um in a trench might have been a fiddle chances are those would have been not at the front though those would have been back right uh and so the you know the vast majority of the music obviously would have been a cappella singing and and we know that that was a big part of the truce and so um in choosing to tell this story in a documentary style versus creating fictitious characters uh and a fictitious plot within a plot in order to follow a more traditional dramatic structure um i think acapella lend itself to lend itself to the reality of the situation but also i think the the vulnerability of the situation and and the performers feel the vulnerability when they're when they're singing a cappella and and i think the nakedness, i think that's yeah. The, the, yeah i think that's become i think that vulnerability <laughs> is part of the is palpable for an audience i i i would agree with you uh wholeheartedly and i'm not sure those were um at least in my head all decisions we were making very uh, conscientiously, but it, that, that was sort of kind of the organic process, and 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 at least for me, what was what was discovered here. Do you feel now you you work in so many aspects of theater and opera? Um, do you feel that this a cappella way in which the this 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 show is 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 presented um, does it communicate differently aside from that that vulnerability? Does does it have unique powers? or different powers uh, than maybe some of the things that you do in your life? I, you know, for sure, in that um, so often when I'm working, I do a lot of work in new musical theater and new opera, we're looking at what are those moments where, where dramatically you kind of want that cushion of sound, you want that mattress, where, and where the performer feels like they need they need that emotional as well as uh, as well as just the the audio um, support underneath them, and that so much of the drama, um, you know, often I feel like in a musical or an opera you get a kind of surf on the orchestration, and and you get to ride it, yeah. and here you're, you have to create it, so you have to create the soft, but you also have to create the big. You have to moments that that want to uh, rise above and feel like you're um, transcending time and space, which is what the musical theater get, does. Um, a, you're sitting 100% with your with your actor singers in order to achieve that. And in, I think in, in some ways, All Is Calm is a very sort of traditional mu musical in that it, you know, 
the but but the singers are the orchestra. They they further the 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 narrative with some of these songs. But then again, there's kind of these you know and I you and I have talked about this that there's these sort of levels of of songs, and sometimes time stops and we are are in a moment. How how traditional do you see the form of this as compared to maybe other works that you that you deal with? You know, I think it's traditional in that um, it's very chrono you know chronological uh, and that it's certainly built in a way that there's a logical point of entry into our story. It's the, it's the call to arms, the de literally the departure for war. There's a climax to our story and there's a denouement. Um, and so I think that is traditional. Besides that, there's not a lot that's traditional. We don't have characters that we lack, you know, <laughs> that we latch onto. Uh, we don't have relationships that we latch onto, other than this idea of a relationship with the enemy. But there's a lot more conversation about a relationship with oh. an enemy than there is actually a relationship with a mother or a lover of, or of a, friends or yes, it, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so the characters that, yeah. are you know other than the, the the exchange of the truce which is maybe what 20 percent of the evening where they're actually you know really engaged with one another um where they're in conversation there's not any dialogue so there's you know character dialogue um are, are pretty major <laughs> um pretty major elements in a traditional musical or piece of theater so so I would say it's much more non-traditional than it is traditional, but structurally, I think That's... that feels, and certainly the musical moments that we've chosen to be our, what we call our concert moments, but those moments that where the, where the musical kind of stands still and you transcend to an, a different emotional reality, those moments are probably quite traditional and where they would land inside a traditional opera or musical where you'd land on an, an sure. aria or a major ensemble or or a feature. Right. But instead of passing from an orchestra to a solo doing an aria, it's the singers all the time, mm -hmm. through, you know, throughout. Yeah, it's a, and a, which uh, presents quite a challenge for them. Um, I want to get into uh, playing another uh, uh, work from this. And uh, but this we wrote this what 14 years ago something like that when we were yeah. younger men um i had hair uh but it's been quite a <laughs> you, you did yeah it's okay you look great though yeah. uh uh <laughs> but what uh this has been on such a journey and we've now taken it to 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 new york um can you just tell us like a little bit about how a work, I mean, it feels like a little bit like waiting for Guffman sometimes when we tell the story, I know. But uh, how does a piece from Minnesota make its way to the Big Apple? And and and, and how, has that, how has that been for you? That was rather non-traditional as well. You know, that this, this show had toured for 10 years and had been produced by multiple companies, theater companies, choruses, um, opera companies around the country, and then landed in New York. And typically a show launches out of New York uh, and then sees subsequent productions after that commercial run in New York. So, so this was an, a non-traditional run to New York, but uh, a producer who had uh, produced a handful of successful shows in New York, most recently Come From Away, uh, the Tony award-winning documentary musical, um, and, but had seen a production, not our production, a production of it out in Idaho and reached out to me and said, has this played New York yet? And I said, no, there's been some talk, but, and she, you know, and she said, I want to bring it into New York. So then the conversation was, do we take it to Broadway or do we take it to off Broadway? And, and decided off Broadway was where it wanted to live. We wanted the intimate environment. It's hard to recoup a holiday show. We don't see very many holiday musicals on Broadway. Uh, no because you can't recoup on a Broadway show and the amount of time for a holiday show. So it was a smarter investment. And, and then the conversation was, do we cast it out of New York, which is incredibly rich, obviously, with talent. But, but by that point, we had had, what, three years under our belt with, with a lot of these same men who had been right. singing the show together. 
And that was, you know, really speaking to that producer about the realities of an acapella musical. And uh, it's a completely different skill set. You can have an incredible soloist, someone said, an incredible Broadway career. But if they haven't had a lot of experience doing choral singing and acapella singing, they are not necessarily have this in their in their toolkit. So, so then we decided let's bring the cast from Minnesota and bring the Theater La Teda production of it, the design team, and and we end up casting a few actors from New York who had either had a history with the show right. or a history of working with um, with us in the Twin Cities. But um, but it was um, it was great to so often regional theater cast everything out of New York and they just bring New Yorkies to the provinces to to create work. And so it was lovely to actually have people who are out here doing really wonderful work, bring them into New York and and share um, with New York uh, some of the extraordinary talent that, that exists in the regions. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And as a former Minnesotan, uh, the amount of pride I I felt of of bringing that uh, the, the 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 greatness I feel of the work that's being done, especially in a place like the Twin Cities, uh, to that venue uh, was really really special. Well, before we go on talking anymore, um, I want to play a little bit from this okay. New York cast, uh, those folks that you were just talking about. And we went out for a day, uh, and I became the videographer. I didn't know I had that uh, skill in me. And we went to Grand Central Station and, uh, frankly, just did a little bit of busking, singing uh, what is probably the signature song uh, from All Is Calm, uh, the, which is uh, my arrangement of Silent Night. And so uh, this was uh, uh, footage that I captured of the New York, the off-Broadway cast singing Silent Night in Grand Central Station.
was Silent Night from All Is Calm, sung by the off-Broadway cast in Grand Central Station, uh, filmed by me uh, on my phone. And uh, I just, even though the audio's maybe not concert hall quality, uh, there's a certain vibe of, of that performance that I, I truly do love. And uh, gosh, I love seeing the faces of those guys and uh, miss working with them this year uh, on this piece. So they're just an extraordinary um, a crew of of actors we've had and and creative people and and everyone um, associated with this show. It's just been it's enriched my life uh, in ways I I wasn't really prepared for. So I want to thank you for this opportunity. Um, I have a question for you. Um, what makes a great Christmas story? This is not the first piece of Christmas theater you've ever done. What what do you suppose is makes a uh, makes for a Christmas piece that people come back to again and again each year? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I think there's, um, for a lot of shows rely on nostalgia, right? So, and whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, so often there's food and tradition surrounding food or gifts or decorations or, um, so I think it's a time that, um, and for, for me this year with, with everyone needing to socially distance and quarantine, I'm more nostalgic than ever. I'm like, oh, I need to order that pizza from the Iron Range where my grandmother used to get us pizza. <laughs> you know, like, you know, things I haven't thought of in years, but, but we long for those traditions. And you have the time to, to miss them now. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but I do think there's, um, I think hope uh, for me is at the center of this time of year. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's Christmas uh, with New Year's right on the heels of it. Um, and where do we find, where do we find hope? And, and how do we um, new beginnings with hope at the center of them? And, and I do think that that's central to all successful Christmas stories. And I think I think all is calm absolutely has that, even though we know that the war continued and millions of men died um, and that Christmas truce never happened again. It's a moment of extraordinary hope um, where hundreds of thousands of men believed in peace um, together. Uh, I agree. And you and I talk quite a lot when we're working with the actors. Um, you know, one of the things that's a challenge for me is I have to take, you know, actors, singers, maybe they're doing musicals, maybe they're doing operas and turn them into an ensemble. But even more than that, we don't have a conductor. There's no one in the pit. There's no one at the piano sort of leading this. They all have to do that themselves. And tempos are so critical to the show for how the timings work out between the dialogue and the, and the music and when that all fits together properly, you and I kind of know, know what that is. And it has a, uh, it gives it a certain propulsion and lift, but we talk quite a bit about, um, working against that, um, that nostalgia, uh, of, of, of this piece uh, and the sentimentality, uh, of, of, of the work. How do you, how are you balancing finding the real emotion of this, of this piece of history, of the work itself, of the music, while not falling into the trap of, of, of the sentimentality. Yeah, and you know, in selecting the text, uh, that was really tricky because I would, my, my impulse would be like, ah, go for the, you know, go for the most sentimental, go for the heart, go for the heart. And, and right. these, you know, it's interesting when I start working with a fresh set of actors on this piece who haven't done it before, the job then is to always get them to dig in because some of these characters, we only hear one line from them, but they have to fully embody that character. It's still a, hum a real human being, whether we spend an evening of dialogue with them or whether it's this one pithy moment. And so, so very often with a fresh cast, it's, it's making them find the weight of the moment with actors who have been doing it for a long time, the goal is to not have them overindulge in the weight of the moment. And um, 
And so, you know, I, I seen one production I didn't, I didn't direct and, um, and I, they brought me in and I was watching rehearsal and, and the men were embracing one another and touching each other on the arms or even one man put his hand on another man's face to say goodbye. And I thought, and, and I had one note for the director and it was like so much beautiful stuff, but these, they're still enemies. They still haven't taken a shower in weeks. They still have not like, this is not a Hallmark commercial. Um, they're living in mud right. up to their knees. It is cold outside. They are hungry. Um, and, and, and they're starving and there's nothing pretty about this. And so, um, investing in, yes, the emotional power and weight of it, but the reality of it was still, these were, these were men who were suffering and men who, um, who despised each other and were taught to despise each other. Right. And if we actually don't have any of the reality of that, we actually give away so much of the power of the story. So when we think about leaning into the sentimentality, we're actually watering down um, the hurdles that they had to actually cross in order to come together on that day. Yeah, and we all know that they went back to, I mean, these men went back to shooting one another. Like that yeah. was just the reality of, of the situation. And though that's not necessarily, um, I mean, it, it's it's talked about, but it's, it, uh, we don't we don't necessarily uh, feel that in some in some of those moments, but that has to always be in the in the background uh, of of who these uh, of the context and and that's that was actually the, the the next question that I wanted to ask you is um, not only are you did you find you know all found texts for for this piece, but we're using pre existing songs. And uh, some of them are, you know, World War One uh, trench songs uh, that maybe don't have as much context for us uh, living in the 21st century. But a lot of them are Christmas songs and they come, I think, with uh, their own baggage. Um, how do you think All Is Calm recontextualizes the hearing of these familiar tunes? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean part of selecting them was what songs would they have sung right what carols were around which were part of their canon of songs they would sing also how do we represent you even all of the verse? yeah and you even rejected trench songs that were like from 1917 because you're like they didn't have that song then so yeah yeah so yeah we, so we, really you, tried you to great honor job of focusing that yeah yeah so obviously the same with Christmas carols, what carols were, would have been around, what carols wouldn't have been around. Um, how do we represent the French and the German and the Brits and, and Welsh and, um, and the Dutch? We have a Dutch carol in there. So part of it was also just trying to really try to represent who was present um, uh, for the truce and what, what ground were they on? Where were they in, on the planet? Uh, but I hope that the carols also that we hear, um, we hear them anew, right? Because they're being sung in a new context. And so often with Christmas time, we hear peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth. You know, we just hear it as this kind of mantra. Uh, we see it on Christmas wrap or on an ornament. And, or, and only angels sing it, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, here men are making that a reality for a moment and and out of all the kind of cliche lyrics i hope that one is heard anew inside the inside the show uh, for sure um i want to play a section from the pbs special um and so people can get a chance to see that which um is going to be uh streamable f uh, for free today uh december 15th on PBS Plus, and uh, so you can you can watch you can watch the whole uh, the whole piece. Uh, but this is a section of uh, of of the story and of and of the history where um, the the men of both sides uh, uh, bury their dead. And uh, this was actually a, a bit later of an addition to the the piece uh, uh, to All This Calm that we added uh, Low Hollow Rose Air Blooming. Um, which uh, certainly one of the iconic German carols of all time. But there is, um, I, I, I absolutely love how the imagery of this ancient carol um, 
gets re-put. I mean, the men are digging into the earth. They're talking about this rose blooming in in uh, in the in the winter time. Um, they ask to be delivered from sin and death, and that that context is is so different than a than a than a hymn to to the to the Virgin Mary versus what's happening on that stage. And um, I, I love how um, some of those Im those bits of imagery from the texts themselves and the carols find their way into uh, into the staging that that you've done here. So uh, we'll 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 let uh, let you all see this. This is uh, Lohau Roser Blooming and Wie schön leuchtet der Morgenstern from All This Con. Es ist ein Rosensprungen aus seiner Wurzelzeit, wie uns die alten Sungen von Jesse war die Art und hat ein Blümlein bracht. Mitten im kalten Winter, wo zu der halben Nacht. An English lieutenant said there was a comrade who had been killed the previous afternoon, and they wished to bury this man. I said, why not? Of course you can do it. And so they brought the dead man laid him on the ground, and we all laid a handful of earth upon him. Captain Josef Seward, 17th Bavarian Regiment. And I'm not afraid to tell you, when I was looking at his grave, the tears was running down my face. And I'm not afraid to say it, because we were bosom pals, and we never even said so long to one another. George Littlefair, Durham. Light infantry. dead was awful, too awful to describe, so I won't attempt it. But the ceremony that followed was different. We had a most wonderful joint burial service. Our padre arranged prayers and psalm. They were read first in English by our padre, and then in German by a boy who was studying for the ministry. The Germans formed up on one side, the English on the other. The officer standing in front, every head bared. Yes, I think it was a sight one will never see again. Second Lieutenant Arthur Pelhamburn of the Six Gordon Highlands. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Der Herr ist mein Hirte. Mir wird nichts mangeln. Er weidet mich auf einer grünen Aue und führt mich zum frischen Wasser. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Und ob ich schon wanderte im finsteren Tal, fürchte ich kein Unglück. That was an excerpt from the PBS special of All Is Calm, Wie schön leuchtet der Morgenstern, and Lo, how a rose air blooming, sung by the cast of All Is Calm. Uh, Peter, what, 
I, before we went into that, I was talking about how some of these bits of imagery from the songs make their way into the uh, into the uh, the storytelling. Um, that was all, I think, pretty deliberate on our part. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think the. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was, I remember it being a challenge with Low How a Rose, though, because it's my favorite carol, and and we really wanted the German. Uh, we really wanted the German to be sung, uh, but the, but for an English speaking audience, the lyrics are so poignant and beautiful. And as you said, when they're recontextualized, they make complete sense, even though that, the, um, in, inside this moment. And so I remember us kind of wrestling with, ah, oh, but I want to hear that in English. I want them to hear, uh, those amazing kind of <laughs> lyrics inside this moment. So um but also wanting to make right. sure that we honored the origins of the of the german carol so and i think i did that was like the t i think i did three different arrangements of this the first one was this like weird polyphonic thing that had german and english going on and we're like this is way too eggheaded for for the moment and it, it was a, it was a tough one to uh to to create i think uh, you and i have also struggled where uh where time can where time can stop in a in a piece that is so uh, fragile as as all is calm and where we need to you know push the push the story forward and it's i think very tempting especially at christmas time to be like oh but i love that carol let's just sing another verse of it and uh i think we did a, a if, if we did one thing right i think we did a good job of of editing uh ourselves and not getting mm -hmm. uh too overindulgent um uh, as we went um that was i think it's PBS important special and oh, oh yeah Sorry, um, oh, please, yeah. that, um, you know, because uh, so many of the World War I archives, the German archives were lost and during World War II, we don't hear from the Germans as much as we hear from the Brits in particular. And that was a challenge in the research. I really wanted it to be equal. Right. And when I discovered it wasn't going to be equal, despite, you know, several trips to Hamburg, Berlin, Dresden, but the most of the firsthand accounts of the war were destroyed in World War II. So, um, World War II, yeah. so the, the German songs then became an important um, element for us in order to make sure the Germans, um, if not equally, were certainly well represented. Yeah, I, I think that's 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 I that's a really important um, and and when you have the same group of people being both sides on this your ear is the one that takes you to to being with those people in the in their emotions their perspectives and i, I think that's uh, that that i hadn't i hadn't thought of that either um i wanted to ask you so what we just played was from the pbs special we've now made this into uh a, you know a film version of a staged production um, and I know that it, you know, it, it was, uh, not an easy task for any of us. Uh, I think it was a really worthwhile one, but I'm really curious to you. You've spent a lot of time with this piece. You're a creator of this work. Did making th this into a film and, or seeing it when it was all done, tell you anything differently about, about all this calm? Did you see it differently? Um, did something translate to the camera that uh, isn't there on stage? Are there things that are on stage that that are tough to get into the camera? Uh, how did you? Uh, how would? How were you shaped on your maybe your relationship with the piece through making this film? Um, hmm. No, it's a great question. One thing that's been interesting about this piece is that we performed it in incredibly intimate settings. You know, we've done it. We did it in. A, a barn in Wisconsin with probably 60 people able to watch it. It was, you know, the middle of December. It was in really the cold. Magical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd see them at breath as they sang. It was really beautiful. And then we've seen it in what is the Queen Elizabeth Hall there in Vancouver. How many seats is that? 3,000 or something, right? A huge 3,000 so, seats. Yeah. Yeah. So we've seen this piece in really intimate spaces and in really large halls. And because the piece is direct address, 90% of the evening is the actor speaking directly to the audience. Um, again, there's very little dialogue where they're talking to each other. And so they're 
I think one of the reasons it can work in a small space or a big space is because it is direct address. They, they're addressing the room they're in. And if that's 50 people, it's 50 people. If it's 3,000, it's 3,000. But one thing I love about the PBS version, and I wish I had thought about this before we did all of our filming, to be honest, because I would have said go further, <laughs> is when you can kind of get in their eyes, when you can really zoom in and see and just be with just be with that 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 single actor in that moment um that zooming in that you can do uh in film uh i i will always favor live performance it's what i do it's what i love but but for this piece when you can kind of just just get right up and inside that actor's eyes and and the uh intimacy of that because most of this text was not meant for public declaration, right? We have one quote by Winston Churchill and, you know, there's a quote by Pope Benedict the 15th, but, but it was not him standing on the balcony declaring this to Rome. It was in a letter. And, and most of this text is, is incredibly intimate. It's letters to a, to a mother or letters to a child or, um, or a journal entry that perhaps no one was ever intended to actually see. And so that is one thing I love about um, about this PBS version is that the intimacy of of the text has an authenticity um, that's really beautiful. I think. Are there any parts of seeing it in the film version that may color your future uh, productions of 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 the piece? You know, I'm not sure I would change the, that I have ideas for changing the staging. If I were, if I could create a film again, I would perhaps um, make some different choices, building it for film um, than for stage. You know, I think, for example, one of the powerful things about the live performance is the actors never leave the stage or they leave for five seconds to put on, to, you know, when, when they sign up, they go on to grab crew from their yeah. base to their to their uniform look, or they grab a bag or a trunk. But they're on stage the whole time, and I think there's power in that inside the stage performance. I'm not sure that that translates to film, for example. Um, and so, um, I think in film there may be more opportunities for isolation uh, than than we take advantage of in a in a live performance. Oh, for sure. Well, I want to thank you, um, first of all, for being with us today and chatting about this. Uh, after all this time, I learned something, which is always a, a great thing. Um, and uh, But more than that, thank you for um, all those many years ago asking me to be a part of this. It's been a life-changing um, moment. And, uh, uh, and mainly thank you for uh, getting, allowing... Uh, these heroic men uh, to be uh, to have their names heard in history and it feels uh, i think particularly sweet this year with all that's going on to have such a, a large audience um through through the pbs film and to have those names heard by by so many so really really thank you peter thank you and congratulations for um for and the sound is incredible and that's one lovely thing right about about the PBS version for you, yeah. right? Is that, um, yeah, it's really, it's an incredibly- It's a, it's a wonderful document. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a wonderful document. Well, I want to uh, play one more piece from uh, from the work, and it's kind of the last big musical uh, number. Uh, this is an arrangement of Auld Lang Syne. Um, I think it, <laughs> Auld Lang Syne keeps coming back to me this year at 2020 because I'm ready to get rid of it, frankly. Um, <laughs> and so uh, uh, this is from a performance uh, a couple years ago from uh, uh, Corleone singing uh, the arrangement of Auld Lang Syne from, uh, from All Is Calm. Thank you, Peter, and enjoy. Thank you. Be well.
That was Auld Lang Syne from All Is Calm, sung by Corleone at one of our Christmas concerts about two years ago. And I want to bring in our director, uh, Phil Jack. Hello, Phil. Hello, Eric. Phil, you've actually been in All Is Calm twice when Corleone did it here in Vancouver. That's right. Uh, how how did you find doing a uh, an a cappella musical with 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 a choir? Uh, that's that's not the normal thing that we do. It's really not the normal thing we do. Um, it is definitely <laughs> an extremely different experience to deal with uh, staging, costuming. Um, even the rehearsal process is quite different because, well, staging and we have to try and figure out a lot of, and it's all memorized and we have no, well, we did have a conductor, I think. Yeah, it was me. Yeah. Such as it was, but I, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it, but I also think like telling an hour long story in this way um, without the stops and all the rest of it, um, it, it is it is quite a tightrope act. I, 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 I never feel as nervous as I do uh, when this show is going, because once you kind of start it, it just goes a cappella for an hour and 10 minutes. It's it it's uh, it's it's really something. How did you find being in inside of like a story in that way a, as a singer? It's a very, I think, more personal experience. Um because it, I think we all have a sort of responsibility to uh, an overall storytelling process that we don't necessarily have when we're an ensemble singer. Right. And the audience applauds and you can talk to the audience. You know, a concert is, is a, a bit more uh, um, has some release valves, I think, for uh, for everyone along the way. But, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Well, last time that we were on the show, we were uh, talking about uh, Translucence, which was the sound and light extravaganza that we were planning on presenting here in Vancouver. And unfortunately, but I guess not surprisingly, with the pandemic, our ability to do events has been uh, curtailed. And uh, we we understand that. We'll hopefully be doing this uh, next year. We'll be presenting that work. Uh, but uh, instead, we are presenting a digital concert uh, for Oath Corleone uh, for the holiday season. We're offering it for about... Uh, Gosh, it's going to be like 12 days uh, long here starting on uh, this coming Friday. And uh, Phil, you're in the in the throes of putting this all together. How are you taking, uh, translating what we are able to normally do in, in our live, uh, live concerts uh, and putting that into something that people are going to be viewing in their homes and, 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 and on YouTube? Uh, how do we get the same feeling that we are able to achieve every year with our, with our Christmas programs, but, but doing it through this medium? Well, I think if we're known for one thing as an ensemble, it is connecting with our audience. And I think uh, that comes through not just in how we interact with an audience physically, but the performance. And if we capture a performance well, then we still have that personal connection. And I think audiences are fairly comfortable with the idea of watching concert movies or things. So we do have, I think we can trust the audience to still receive what we uh, want to give to them. For sure. And I think there's also like this kind of added benefit that, yeah, we can have a little bit of the energy that we might have in a, in a concert setting and some of that communal aspect of, you know, sitting in the seats all together, maybe singing Silent Night together, etc. But because we're able to bring it into people's homes, um, you know, my, one of my hopes is that uh, this can become part of the, the playlist and the soundtrack for folks holiday season. Um, uh, how do you feel like, you know, what, what, are you thinking about anything as far as like how we how we sort of invite ourselves into people's houses at a, at a kind of important time for for family and, and, and friends? Yeah, we do have, I think, the creative tools at our disposal to uh, create an atmosphere that even is not actually possible in a live performance. Uh, we, we can actually create uh, a space that people can uh, take with them. It's portable. Exactly. And and what we hope is by offering it over many, many days over the holiday season, um, when it's the right moment for you to either watch or just to listen, um, we can be a part of your your holidays. It's going to be a trying time for everyone. We're going to I think we're going to feel a lot of distance this year and hopefully um, our often can help bridge that gap. Well, we will be back to you. Uh, Phil and I will be back to you with uh, more of Corleone Insight in 2021. 
Good riddance, 2020. I think I, I think I can say that on behalf of all of mankind. We, we, we've had it with you, and uh, uh, we're excited to, uh, to, uh, to see you in the new year. Uh, we've got some wonderful guests lined up, and uh, we hope you have a, a, a really joyous and safe holiday season. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. They say it's all right. Boom, 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 boom. They say it's all right. Boom, 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 boom. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Whoa, it's all right. Now we're gonna move it slow. Boom, 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 boom. Up in the lights low. Boom, 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 boom. When you move it slow, it feels.